Welcome to the Business Central lunch event and our session about payment practices analysis in a Business Central, where my colleague Vadim and I will try to explain how to use this feature and where it is applicable. I will start first with a short introduction and continue with specifics required by some countries where it can be used as a regular regulatory feature. And then my colleague Vadim will show you different models of usage of this new analysis for payments to vendors and from customers. Okay, let's start. Um, let's first explain what payment times or payment practices analysis is. Uh, we simply want to analyze how you behave against your vendors when it comes to the payments on or after due dates, but also how your customers behave against your company. You can collect this information on other places, but not so structural. Additionally, some countries require payment analysis for your vendors as a regulatory obligation. For example, each year, Swedish companies with 250 and more employees must report Swedish companies' registration office that payment times they have for purchases from a company that are smaller than themselves. Similar acts exist in the uh, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand, but in these countries, this is not related to the company size. So, we decided to create this app as a global feature for this kind of reporting, as it can be useful in other countries as for some additional analysis. It can become obligatory in other countries, but also can be useful for internal analysis or for audit reporting. And as we had a similar feature earlier in United Kingdom-based app, we decided to obsolete this code and delocalize it, extending this functionality with additional features so it can work as a global app. So, result is a new app, but also one additional step toward the localization. What can we analyze with this new feature? My colleague Vadim will show it in details, but I just want to provide some high-level overview. Users can choose between two different aggregation types, per period or per company size. Per company size is required in Sweden, but in other countries we mentioned, it is required to provide analysis per period. Now, so far, authorities require this analysis work for vendors only, but we decided to extend this feature so you can use for additional analysis, and now you can choose between vendors, customers, or both of them. And when you aggregate report, you can get detailed lines, but also some good statistics average agreed and actual payment period and percentage paid on time. Now, my colleague Vadim will show you first analysis per company size and after that per payment times. Vadim? Thanks, Alexander. Uh, let me show you how this works in Business Central. So, um, we will navigate to the payment practices page where we will create a new payment practice header here we have the options that we need to uh, consider. Let's start with the company size. So for this, uh, we will use a full year of 24. Uh, and we will fill in all, all the necessary uh, data. After that, you just need to click generate and the lines will be generated. So the data will be collected, the header will be populated with the statistics uh, such as averages and uh, particulars are generated where you can see uh, uh, the statistics for each uh, company size. So for company size small, for example, we, you can see uh, the average agreed payment period and the average actual payment period with the percent paid in time. If you're interested in the particulars, uh, you can always click uh, on the numbers where you will see the particular details such as uh, what was the invoice entry, what was the payment entry relating to that invoice, and all the dates. Uh, also, the invoice amount, etc. Uh, this will be uh, the particulars for only for this line. But if you want uh, to see the particulars for the, all the header, you can click uh, on the headers number. Here you will see more lines, uh, all of them, that will, were used for this header. Uh, this data is stored for historical purposes, so you can always come back and see the historical data. So we did this for the company size. Uh, now let's uh, switch it up. Oh yeah, 
I forgot. You can also print it. So, of course, uh, when you need to report it, you will print it and uh, the appropriate layout will be uh, selected, etc. Let's close this one. Yes, so now we can go back and generate one for period. Uh, one thing to mention about the company sizes, uh, of course, you uh, specify the company sizes uh, on the vendor cards and the ones that are specified will be included in this report. Now let's switch to the uh, aggregation type period. You, you can see the lines have disappeared because the aggregation type has changed and they are no longer uh, valid. Uh, let's regenerate them. So here we can see the report uh, has generated other lines. Uh, now these are lines uh, that are uh, related to the periods. Uh, those periods are set up in special table, payment periods, where you can specify any periods you desire to see in this report, but for demonstration purposes, uh, here, here are some lines. So again, as uh, with company sizes, you can uh, drill down into the particulars of each period where you can see which uh, payments were included, why, uh, some data on the actual payment days, agreed payment days, etc. Um, uh, one thing to note that in some countries, uh, they're more interested uh, in what amounts uh, from invoices were paid in particular periods um, and not the count of the invoices. So this, this would uh, be reflected in this statistic. So as we can see here, a lot of the invoices were paid uh, very fast but amount wise they were not even the one third uh, and the bigger invoices are always paid late so this is something we can learn from this one also this uh, is applicable for example for uh, we did just did this for customers but we can do the same for uh, we just did this for vendor we can do the same for customers uh, and uh, yeah this is how you can use the payment uh, practices in your business central uh, now, take it away, Alexander. Thank you, Vadim, on such a good presentation. And now we are finishing. Uh, as I like to say, this is a small feature, but very cool. And yeah, I want to thank you all of you uh, for attending this session. Uh, I want to remind you, we will have a and a session, so you can go there. You can ask whatever you want to hear about this feature, if something is missing, if you want to get more information. And before I close this session, I want to invite you, I want to invite you to uh, watch all sessions on BC Lunch event, of course, but this one, what is new legislation localization is called connected with uh, what we presented today. So it will be good to, to take this session to see all new things in uh, legislation localization scope. And before I close, uh, if you need some information about BC Central, whatever topic is, you can easily find one of these links. If you cannot remember all of them, minimum try to not to forget this in the middle, AKMSBC also. When you go there, you can find all important information, all links about the center. So once more, thank you for attending this session. <laughs>